Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we go swimming with manatees. We'll take you with us on this surprising and thrilling experience, and we'll show you where and when you can swim with these friendly and curious creatures. Hey guys, it is 6.30 in the morning here in Crystal River, and it's 43 degrees outside, which is really cold for Florida standards. And we're about to go swimming. We are really tired and about to get really cold, but we're told if we get to Three Sister Springs early, that increases our chance of swimming with the manatees. Let's hope this ends up being worth it. We bundled up and made the short walk from our hotel room to the Adventure Center, which is located on site at the plantation on Crystal River. After signing our waivers, it was time to get suited up. It's gonna be just like leggings or nylons. All right. Oh, thanks, that helps. <laughs> 43, now it helps so <laughs> Good to go. It's styling today. There's actual steam rising from the water. Once everyone had their wetsuits on, we went back into the Adventure Center to watch a short but informative video on Manatee Manors before boarding our boat to the springs. The boat ride to King Spring was a short one, allowing just enough time for our guides to go over the rules and etiquette of swimming with the manatees, and also to share some interesting manatee facts, such as this one about a manatee's hair. Every hair is more sensitive than a cat's whisker. If you're within about 10 feet of a manatee, and not moving at all, the manatee is The manatee can feel you breathing. Once in the water, Skylar was quickly approached by this curious manatee, and it soon became clear that these manatees would not be practicing social distancing. My entry into the water was even more exciting, as before I could even get off the ladder, I learned that manatees take a particular interest in long hair, but I wasn't nervous at all. Once this manatee realized my hair wasn't food, it was off to find a tastier meal. One of the things we loved most about our tour with the Adventure Center is that they make the health and safety of the manatees a top priority. This means using your manatee manners, which I'll tell you a little bit more about right now. Once you arrive for your tour and get your wetsuit on, they will have you watch a short video which will talk about manatee manners, which does include passive observation. It is a way to observe the manatees in their natural habitat without bothering them. Now, just because you're doing passive observation though, doesn't mean that the manatees will. We learned very quickly that they will get up in your personal space. Passive observation meant enjoying the company of the manatees while calmly floating on the surface of the water. It also means not chasing or attempting to pet or ride the manatees, or approaching a manatee that is resting or eating. We found passive observation to actually be quite rewarding, as the more relaxed and still we were, the more manatees approached us. We also found the 5mm wetsuits to be incredibly buoyant, making it easy to float on the water with minimal effort, and keeping our hands free to record this amazing experience. And we were especially happy to see that everyone in our group followed passive observation, although we certainly can't say the same for the manatees. So Kings 
Bay is fed by warm water springs, which makes it a haven for the manatees in the winter months. So in the winter, when the Gulf waters start to cool down, they head to the Kings Bay area, where the water stays 72 degrees year round. And today we learned that Kings Bay contains the highest concentration of manatees in a natural area in the world. That's pretty cool. And today we learned the difference between a manatee refuge and a sanctuary. So the entirety of Kings Bay is a manatee refuge, which that means it's a protected area and certain water activities may be restricted to protect manatees from harm. Now these red areas are actual sanctuaries and these are restricted to manatees only in the winter months. So today on our tour, we went to the King Spring, which is located down here. As you can see though, there is a little keyhole area that's not a part of the sanctuary. So humans are allowed to swim into that area. Now most of the manatees do hang out in the sanctuary, but this little keyhole area allows for manatees who are a little more social to swim into the keyhole area with the humans. And today we found many manatees that were curious and wanted to hang out. Now let's get back to the underwater adventure. As you'd probably expect, you'll see more than just manatees while exploring Kings Bay. During our time snorkeling, we also saw countless fish, including several sheep's head and hundreds of snook, which appeared to be no more afraid of us than the manatees. We were also lucky enough to catch a glimpse of this giant tarpon, which I was a bit concerned might try to make me its lunch. But thankfully, unlike the manatees, the fish had no interest in me. Getting back to the manatees, we were really surprised at just how social these amazing creatures are. And while you may have heard manatees referred to as sea cows, we found their temperaments to be much more similar to a dog than a cow, as they are extremely curious and seem to enjoy interacting with people. We learned from our guides that manatee's friendly demeanor results largely from the fact that they have no real natural predators. This is due to their large size and the fact that they rarely inhabit the same waters as large meat eaters such as sharks and alligators. Sadly, they do still face major threats, including loss of habitat and food source, red tide, and collisions with boats and boat propellers. We still have plenty more of our underwater adventure to share, but first, let's take a minute to cover why you should book your own manatee adventure with the Plantation Adventure Center. So if you're thinking that snorkeling in 43 degree weather might be cold, you'd be right, it definitely is. But please do not let that prevent you from going out on one of these manatee tours, especially if it's with the Adventure Center. Now, as you can see, they do a great job of keeping you protected from the wind. And we also found out right away that the cold weather actually works out in your favor. As the colder the weather is, the more manatees that will be heading to the warmer spring waters. Once you actually get in the springs, you'll be wearing five millimeter wetsuits, which not only will help you stay warmer longer, but will also help you float better. Now, once you're done snorkeling and you get back on the boat, they have towels for you to dry off, and they also will give you hot chocolate and coffee to help you warm back up. During our manatee tour, we learned that Kings Bay is home to over 30 full-time resident manatees, but more than 500 manatees call the bay home during the winter months, with migrating manatees swimming from as far as the Texas Gulf Coast each year. And since manatees can only filter small amounts of salt water, they must stay close to the coast and its freshwater sources at all times. And one of the primary jobs of manatee moms before releasing their calves into the wild is to teach them the locations of these freshwater sources.
So we're really glad we decided to brave the cold weather this morning and catch one of the first tours because there were manatees everywhere in the springs. There were. I didn't even get off the ladder to the boat before I had a manatee literally in my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just a warning for those of you with long hair who are planning to do the manatee tour, they may think your hair is grass and they'll probably try to eat it. <laughs> we did learn though that they do not have any front teeth, so thankfully I didn't lose any hair. <laughs> so while manatees are often referred to as sea cows, behave like a dog, and resemble a cross between a walrus and a mermaid, you may be surprised to hear that they're most closely related to the elephant and this guy, the hyrax. In fact, all three descend from the same hooved ancestor from over 50 million years ago. While a manatee's skin is quite similar to an elephant's, its stiff vibration-sensing hairs are more similar to the hyrax. And all three share similar toes, teeth, skulls, and even reproductive systems. So whether they're posing for the camera, catching a ride on your leg, or even chewing on your hair, Swimming with these manatees is a constant adventure and truly an experience of a lifetime. If you're considering swimming with the manatees yourself, we'd highly recommend booking with the Adventure Center as we found Captain Mark and the tour guides, John and Liz, to be friendly, knowledgeable, and professional. We also love the fact that the Adventure Center is located on site at the plantation on Crystal River, where we stayed the night before and after our manatee adventure. The resort offers some great hotel stay and Adventure Center packages, and it was really convenient being able to wake up and just have a short walk to our early morning tour. If you're interested in seeing more of this waterfront, 232-acre, eco-friendly resort, We'll be posting more of that experience in our next video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you're interested in seeing more things to do while you're in Crystal River, check out this video next. Thanks for watching.